So in this video, I'm going to talk about the autonomic control of pupillary size and accommodation. The three main muscles that are involved in this process are the radial muscle, the sphincter muscles, and the ciliary muscle. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the autonomic control of pupillary size and accommodation. The three main muscles that are involved in this process are the radial muscle, the sphincter muscles, and the ciliary muscle. So this diagram right here represents the iris. And in the middle here, we have the pupil. So on the outer edge of the iris, we have the radial muscles, and it has alpha-1 receptors. When alpha-1 is activated, it causes radial muscles to contract. The contractions of the radial muscles causes the muscles to pull, to pull it laterally, and which leads to an increase in the pupil size, which is called metriasis. On the other hand, in the middle, we have uh, the sphincter muscles, which is a circular muscle. So this muscle has M3 receptors. When we activate M3 receptors, it will cause the muscles to contract. The contractions of this circular muscles constrict the pupil, making the pupil smaller, which is also called meiosis. And because the sphincter here is in the middle, the muscle here in the middle, remember, is M3. The muscle here on the outside, it's alpha 1. And another uh, muscle that has M3 receptor is the ciliary muscles. The ciliary muscles right here, when it's contracted, it causes uh, accommodations for near vision. So now let's discuss about the effects of different drugs have on pupillary size in accommodations. Uh, first, the first scenario is when given a patient in muscarinic agonist. A muscarinic agonist will bind to the muscarinic receptors here on the sphincter muscles and here on the uh, ciliary, ciliary muscles and activate uh, them. So on the, uh, on the sphincter muscles, activation of the sphincter muscles causes the constrictions of the circular muscles would constrict the pupil, make the pupil smaller, uh, which leads to meiosis. Uh, in addition to that, when you constrict the ciliary muscles, it leads to near accommodations for near vision. So muscarinic agonist, you have meiosis, and accommodation. However, when you give a muscarinic antagonist, which blocks M3 on the sphincter muscles and on the ciliary muscles, in that case, when you no longer been able to constrict the sphincter muscles, the radial muscle will predominate. So when the radial muscle contracts, it causes um, the dilations of the pupil, which is called metriasis. And you also block the M3, M3 receptors on the ciliary muscles, so now you're unable to accommodate, which is called cycloplegia, so unable to accommodate for near vision. So with muscarinic antagonists, we have metriasis and cycloplegia. So in the case so how do we differentiate uh, between metriasis that is caused by muscarinic antagonists and the alpha-1 agonist? So in the alpha-1 agonist, when you give an alpha-1 agonist, it will activate the radial muscles here. And the radial muscle contracts, which causes the dilations of the pupil, also called uh, metriasis. But there are no alpha-1 receptors on the ciliary muscles, so you have no cycloplegia. So that is how you differentiate between an alpha-1 agonist and a muscarinic antagonist. In both cases, they cause 
matrices, but only in muscarinic antagonists because you're blocking the M3 uh, receptor on the ciliary muscles. That's why you have cycloplegias because you've no longer been able to contract the ciliary muscles here. But in the alpha-1 agonist, you can still do because it does not affect the, uh, the ciliary muscle or the M3 receptor.